everybody, Dustin Laguerre here with Rob. Rob, how are you today? I'm doing great. I am excellent because you're gonna tell us all about the Nessus destination and some of the events that we can experience here. What is your favorite event? So mine is probably the Cabal Drill that you guys saw earlier. There's a huge Cabal warship flying up in the sky and it's shooting down rockets while you're trying to defend this drill against a bunch of ground forces. It's, it's just complete chaos. And that's actually a public event, correct? Right. So that's a returning event type. How have you evolved public events in Destiny 2? Well, so that's actually a brand new event type that we have in Destiny 2. Uh, we have a few events that we've taken and reimagined from before. We also have a huge number of new types. In fact, we have more new types than uh, we've ever had in Destiny before. So with public events, we looked. At, the team looked at things that we did in releases, such as the Taken King with the Court of Oryx and Archon's Forge. And we thought a lot about how do we take that type of of public gameplay that has you know has some difficulty has a little bit of bite to it and it's really kind of interesting to play how do we take that and do that in destiny 2 and instead of finding one spot in the game that you would go to over and over we decided to diffuse that among the public events on all the destinations and so you saw things like the heroic triggers so every public event has an optional bonus objective and if you trigger it then you get an extra hard version of the event uh, with way more enemies coming in and sometimes optional bonus objectives or named bosses that you have to kill. And if you are able to complete that, you get bonus rewards for it. So also we got to experience adventures. What are these? They seem like mini stories almost. Adventures are sort of side missions. They're kind of uh, similar in scope to some of the, the quest missions that you might have done in previous Destiny games. Um, and they have a story, they're fully voiced. Uh, they expand on the story of what's going on in the destination uh, or potentially tell you a little bit of the backstory of the characters or why some of the combatant races are there and what they're fighting over. Um, they're all self-contained. Uh, they're reasonably quick and they have no load screen so you can sort of start one and then finish it and stay in the destination as a group and then go on to the next content. I have no way to do that. So the back seems to like you very much. Of course, Lost Sectors, everybody's really interested in that. We found a few where there's a painting on the side of the wall, the logo, basically. Mm -hmm. Then you gotta figure out how to get in there. Why don't you describe that a little bit for the audience? Yeah, so Lost Sectors originated from the idea of finding a little cave and wondering what if there was actually something down there? What if it wasn't just you know a small little cave potentially with a chest in it? But what if you kept going and it turned into a huge cave system and then there was a boss in it? And when you fought the boss, there was a chest and you can loot it. Uh, and we loved that fantasy and we invested pretty heavily in some new tech and workflows that let us execute that throughout all the destinations in Destiny 2. So as you guys saw, the flow is generally, you can spot this, um, symbol uh, and we're painting it in places where you can usually see it from the main road and when you see that symbol you know that there's a lost sector nearby so then you have to sort of get off your sparrow and hunt around and try and find the entrance and some of the entrances are easier to find than others some of them are are pretty well hidden and there's some gameplay just to finding them and then once you get down uh, each of them has an encounter um, the size of them varies some of them are shorter than others some of them are actually quite large and at the very end there's a boss that you fight uh, after you defeat the boss, uh, it unlocks the chest and you can loot the chest and move on. We were also sent on a, a mini quest, part of a quest from Failsafe actually, the new ghost-like character that kind of helps us get around. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what that was? Yeah, so Failsafe is uh, a new NPC in Destiny 2. Uh, you might have heard her talking during the strike that we showed at the Destiny reveal in E3. Uh, she's actually the AI that's left over from this human colony ship that crashed on the destination, and she, she's still ticking even though all the, the other survivors are gone. Um, so this quest that you get, it's an example of something we're calling a world quest. And if adventures represent really small bite-sized stories, world quests are our way of telling much larger, uh, more interesting and multi-part stories about a destination. Uh, this one is really the, the sort of story about Failsafe and you know where she's going from here and what happened to the crew of the ship that crashed. So we don't really talk about exactly what's going on there because it's an interesting thing for players to discover. But as you guys saw that they're similar in scope to um, to sort of the quest missions that you might have seen before. There's multiple of them strung together. These open up actually after you finish the main campaign. So they give you a chance to go back, revisit the destination, have some additional story content, and also get really good rewards. But you're giving us a little bit of a tease of one. Mm -hmm. So 
So finally, there's multiple landing points. Are those all unlocked the first time that you go to a planet? No, so when you first go to a planet, uh, you're not gonna see very much. Uh, we really want the sense of exploration of starting in an area and looking at all the things that are there and then moving to the next area and like slowly uncovering the entire destination. Uh, as you complete adventures or story missions or other content, you'll start unlocking landing zones and more and more of the place will open up. Uh, some of it will be higher level and you might wander into it and then realize that you're probably not supposed to be here yet. So there's a real progression to the spaces that opens up over time. And then, like I said, with the world quests, and there's some a couple of uh, other things that have this property too, when you go back after finishing the main campaign, there's even more stuff to do on the destination that you might not have seen before. Perhaps we can discover how they are producing it and then blow them up. So what are flashpoints and how do they work? So we, know, we knew going into Destiny 2 that we wanted to create a big weekly activity with an awesome reward that everybody could do and that was focused more on the open world, uh, kind of a counterpoint to, say, the nightfall each week. Um, and we spent a long time exploring different ways in which we could present that. And ultimately, we realized that public events are one of the most exciting pieces of content that we have, especially with the heroic events and a couple of other things that we're not even talking about yet. So every week we pick one destination and we give you an objective to go to that destination and clear out public events. Um, and then if you, well, after you've cleared out the public events, you come back and you get a pretty awesome reward for it. But there's a few other things that are going on as well. Um, so Cade each week sells a bunch of treasure maps for you to find. Um, and those are always on whatever the featured destination is for the Flashpoint. And then there's a bunch of secret bosses that you can only trigger and summon when that destination is the Flashpoint Week. And most of those things are related to the public events. So if you are able to finish a public event quickly, or if you trigger the heroic version of the public event, you might get an extra boss who comes stomping in. And those guys drop extra rewards as well. Uh, and then there's a couple of other things that, that occurred during that week. So all in all, our goal is every single week there is a featured destination in Destiny 2 and you go there and you spend a ton of time traveling around and exploring, getting really familiar with it. And then the next week rolls around and it's someplace new and it helps keep the game fresh. Awesome. Well, thank you, Rob, so much for showing us this space. I can't wait to dive into it more. Thanks a lot. Of course. Guys, for more on Destiny 2, keep it right here on IGN. Thanks for watching this IGN First on Destiny 2. If you like Destiny, be sure to check out Fireteam Chat, our weekly Destiny show that airs Fridays at 5. And don't forget to come back and check out more IGN First coverage on Destiny 2.